so hi everyone. Um, my name is Dan Clark from the Microsoft Edge team. Um, in this breakout session on CSS module scripts, um, this session is slated for open discussion, but I uh, think it would be helpful just to run through a few slides to like set the context here. Uh, I think a good goal to be to get out of this would be to achieve some kind of consensus on a V1 of CSS modules. Um, to set the stage for that, I'll just uh, do like a quick recap of the future of the feature. Um, I'll talk about some issues that um, held us up last year on um, involving uh, this uh, security issue around involving mime type and then about at imports and then um, we can open it up for discussion and as time permits we might also be able to talk about some like, future directions for for the feature for CSS modules. Thanks Dan. Let me just remind you and everybody that uh... Uh, the captionist as well as others uh, might appreciate speaking more slowly than normal. Yes, yeah, I'll slow down. Um, so CSS module scripts is this idea where um, we could integrate CSS into the ECMAScript module system. This just means that I should be able to import a style sheet from a CSS file the same way that today I might import from a JavaScript file. So. There are multiple reasons we might like to do this. Um, we'd like to leverage advantages of the ECMAScript module system. Um, with ECMAScript modules, I get uh, elimination of duplicates where we'll, we won't process the same resource twice, even if it's pulled in at multiple points. Um, there's a well understood order at which our dependencies are evaluated um, with CSS modules, even if there are mixed JavaScript and CSS dependencies, there would be a, a clear order at which these are available evaluated. And with, uh, with modules, we know that when code is executing, when the importing code is executing at that point, all of that code's dependencies have already been successfully evaluated. And there's evidence that developers want this just in terms of all the build tools that are used to achieve this sort of thing today. Like there are a number of tools that allow you to require CSS, uh, import CSS, Things such as the version of CSS modules often used with Webpack and React, um, not to be confused with the proposal we're talking about today, as well as um, tools like Lit Element, which follow really similar patterns to what's proposed with uh, the CSS module syntax. So there seems to be um, seems to be evidence that developers want want to be able to do this sort of thing. So where we ran into trouble with this feature last year is this security issue involving MIME type. So modules, um, once we have more than one resource type, the MIME type that the server sends over the wire is used to determine how what type of module we've got. So if we get a text CSS MIME type with our requested resource, the browser knows that, okay, this is a CSS module, so I'm going to parse it as CSS and do uh, the CSS module behavior. Where this runs into difficulty is the fact that modules can be uh, imported cross origin. And so if I am writing what I think is just a CSS module, maybe I'm not that careful because I think like it's just CSS, it's not script, so like it's safe. Um, but the problem is if this third party that I'm taking the resource from is say it's compromised or it like turns rogue or whatever, it can respond to my imports with a JavaScript MIME type and a malicious payload. And suddenly I'm executing third party script where I thought I was just getting CSS. So what we've been doing over the last year is I've been working with um, some other co-champions in TC39 to advance this proposal called import assertions to change, change the language, add, uh, add to the import syntax to allow other information to be passed along with a given import. And what this lets us do is uh, pass along the expected type with an import. This will be required when you are importing a CSS resource and the type, um, this type assertion will prevent um, any surprises where if the MIME type of the fetched resource is not CSS as was expected, then the import will just fail. So there's no possibility for some kind of uh, privilege escalation or type confusion. Um, another issue that has sometimes come up with this feature is the question of what do we do about CSS at import rules? Um, there's kind of two, two paths to take here. 
one path is just uh, don't do anything special with them. Um, they won't have any effect on the ECMAScript module graph. Um, the other approach is to actually give them special behavior in CSS modules where a at import rule will actually constitute a CSS module. And then you have non-leaf CSS modules and you can build a complex graph of CSS modules. Um, there are good arguments on both sides of this question, and we can get into that in more detail later in this session if we if we want. But I think the best way to actually drive towards a decision here would be to move forward with the V1 that just bans the use of at imports, will fail on the use of at imports, that allows us to not box ourselves into a corner in terms of backwards compatibility. And then we get uh, we get this feature being used in production, we build developer excitement around it, and we get a lot of more, a lot more information and feedback from developers about how they want to use this feature, um, about how it is used, and that information and experience might help us actually drive towards a decision um, later on for this. So with that context set, I think we could move into discussion. Um, I think the thing to start with might just be like, is there uh, consensus on this CSS modules uh, v1 with import assertions and with no at imports. Um, are implementers interested in building this? Um, are there objections? Um, and if we can get somewhere on that, um, we could dig into this topic that got punted on Monday, uh, adopted style sheets, because um, that's there's some issues to resolve around that, that API, and that's pretty pretty closely related to CSS modules. Um, and then as time permits, we could talk about some future directions for CSS modules um, in terms of a recent proposal from Justin about bundling the multiple style sheets into the same file, um, ideas about adding named exports from CSS modules, and like maybe spending some more time on this at imports question uh, beyond um, just banning um, the features as, as uh, I'm suggesting that we do in this V1. So with that, um, I think we can go to the queue. Um, a good way to start, maybe like any any folks that like would have concerns or objections to this V1 of CSS modules, um, uh, be great. Okay. <clears throat> be great for, to hear from you. 